Hi friends, it's Amy. Welcome to my bookish life. Today I want to talk about my reading from February 1st through February 9th. So let's get to it. So I got to off to a little bit of a slow start in February. I was playing catch up for the first four-ish days, but it's fine. <laughs> Everything will be fine. One of the really fun things about February is that the girl band readathon is happening, created by Rainy from Rainy Blue Reads, and I am a co host for Team Destiny's Child, and it's been loads of fun already with all the sprints happening all the time, watch longs, everything. It's so, so great. I will link all of this stuff down below. But I'm also trying to do a whole bunch of other things as well. And <sighs> I'm starting to be a little slumpy. So let's start with the books that I've finished. I have finished four books in the month of February so far. And I'm okay with that. Also, right now, <laughs> I'm in the middle of four other books. I, I can't even say the middle. I've started four other books. <laughs> oh man. So the first book that I finished this month in the month of February was There's No Coming Back From This by Anne Garvin. This is the book that I was buddy reading with my friend Jane. This book, it was a hoot. It was a hoot. I really enjoyed it. I had so much fun reading it with Jane. Highly recommend Buddy Reading Books with Jane. We were only about 35% done with the book by the time January 31st came around, which I was kind of disappointed about. However, because we were not 50% done with it, I could use it for one of the prompts for the Girl Band Readathon, which is very exciting. I used it for the prompt, haven't heard a lot of great reviews in Team Destiny's Child, and I heard no reviews about this book. And when I looked at Goodreads, I was not super impressed <laughs> by the reviews that I read. However, I'm really glad that I gave it a shot, and I'm really glad that I read it. I ended up giving it four stars and really enjoyed it. Definitely a good time. The next book that I finished was Marshmallow S'mores Murder by Leslie Langtree. This one I was about 50% done with before the end of January. And I just didn't want to rush it at the end of the month. So I didn't. I really enjoyed this one. This is the third book in the Mary Rath mystery series. And I just really love this series. Uh, Mary Rath is a former CIA agent and she is outed and has to retire early. And she goes back to her hometown, changes her name, and now she runs a Girl Scout troop with her best friend. And I love this troop. And the thing is, from the first books, which is kind of where I was reading this month, to the later books, the troop has evolved into its own characteristics. Each individual girl has, as well as the troop as a whole. And it's been so much fun to see that evolve. I just really am enjoying it. It was interesting to see them before where I know them now. And I just really liked it. The next two books that I finished, I haven't talked about at all on my channel. So I'm really excited. The third book that I finished in January was Ophie's Ghosts by Justine Ireland. I got this a very long time ago from Libro FM's Educator Advanced Listening Copy Program, and I just hadn't gotten to it. I'm so mad at myself for taking as long as I did to get to this book. It is five stars all the way. One of the perspectives that this book often takes is that of different places, different settings. And I wasn't sure how I was going to like that. I was very weary of that plot device, but it turns out I kind of love it. So really mad at myself for waiting so long to read this. It starts with Ophie, Ophelia, 
being woken in the middle of the night by her father standing at her bed telling her that she needs to get her mom and get hidden and Ophi doesn't really know what to do but she listens to her father and it turns out that it was not her father. It was actually her father's ghost that came and warned her that they needed to hide. And ugh, that is the day that she learned that she can see the dead. It is a wonderful piece of historical fantasy. I just was enthralled from the moment I started listening, I got a digital ebook copy of it from the library so that I could go back and look at the writing in print. It was fabulous. I am so excited to grab a copy of this for my classroom. And I did actually use this for a girl, girl band prompt as well as a BIPOC author because Justine Ireland is a BIPOC author. And then the last book that I read, just coming in on the radar yesterday, one of my students reminded me that she had let me borrow one of her books. And it was The Boy, The Mole, The Fox, and The Horse by Charlie Mackesy. And I started reading it. And then I finished reading it. And it was delightful. I am telling you right now, I would love to rip this book apart, frame every single page. I'd need two copies front and back. Um, so I could get front and back in all of the frames and just plaster them on my walls. I want, I just love I just loved it. It's this tale of these four unlikely characters that form this friendship and they talk about the meaning of life and it's delightful. It is a delightful read. A very short read, but absolutely delightful. <laughs> I gave this five stars and it doesn't have a lot of a plot. It's really just them getting together and talking so good. So good. So delightful. Those are the books that I have finished for February. In terms of the books that I am currently reading, as I said, I'm going to talk about four and I'm going to talk about them briefly. The first book that I am currently in the middle of, I'm 100 pages into is Three Hours by Roseman Lupton. This book I am currently reading for uh, an in real life book club and I hate it. Here's the thing. I found out <laughs> that this was the book for the book club and I couldn't get access to a copy of it in any way unless I purchased it. So I went on Amazon and I purchased it. I didn't look at what it was about, which was dumb because this is my fault. Okay. And I purchased it. As soon as I read the description, I knew I probably wasn't going to love this. Because I can tell you, this is a well-written book. Okay. Like this is a good thriller. I just don't want to read about it because as a teacher, reading about a siege situation in a school is not easy and not something that I want to do with my spare time. And I am forcing myself to keep going because honestly, I absolutely want to know what happens to these characters. I am drawn to these characters, but I also want to look away from these characters. It was very strong of me to say that I hate it. I, I really don't even think it's fair for me to say that I hate it. I just, I don't, I'm struggling with reading it because of the subject matter. Really, that's it. It's very well written. I'm very intrigued by the characters. I absolutely want to know what happens. I just don't want to do all the reading to get there. And we'll, we'll see if I can, if I can make it. It is a pretty short book. It's only 300 pages. 
So I am a third of the way through. So I'm going to keep trying. Book club is on Monday. We'll see how far I get. Uh, but I did decide. And I was validated in this decision. Uh, one of the prompts for Destiny's Child is to read a book that you're considering getting rid of. And honestly, as soon as I read this synopsis, I wanted to just get rid of it. So I decided that this is what I'm, that I'm going to use this book for that. If, if I can get through it. So we'll see about that. <laughs> Another book that I'm currently in the middle of is These Happy Golden Years by Laura Ingalls Wilder. I am also about 100 pages into this one. I started reading it last night. I'm buddy reading this with Rainy from Rainy Day Reads. And she is the one that told me that February 7th to February 10th is the Little House on the Prairie readathon. So she was like, let's read it then. And I was like, absolutely, let's do that. This is the book in which Laura actually becomes a teacher and she starts teaching and she starts her romance with Almanza Wilder. So I was just in it. So all of a sudden I looked up and I was on page 100 and I hadn't checked in with Rainy at all. And that's, that's how my, <laughs> that's how my reading is going. <laughs> so I'm really enjoying that, having so much fun with that one. This month is one of the rare months that my book clubs land on the same week. And <laughs> they're both next week. But for my second book club, we are doing a theme this month, and the theme is love stories. And so for love stories, I chose the book Bride Test by Helen Huang, and I'm really enjoying it. I'm about 30% done, and I'm really needing the breaks <laughs> and very much enjoying it. It is a love story. I am taking bride as being a positive word. So it is my buzzword book and it is on my list of 12 books recommended by 12 friends on my Instagram. So it's absolutely perfect. So that's where I went. <laughs> And then the last book that I have started recently is A River Enchanted by Rebecca Ross. This is the big group read for the girl band readathon. So I decided to start that. I have the digital ebook e copy of it from Kindle Unlimited as well as the digital from Hoopla. And I am a little weary of this one because it is adult fantasy and I don't always mesh well with that, but I'm really enjoying it. So I'm only about 25% through. So we will see <laughs> if that enjoyment continues, but so far definitely enjoying it. And I do have the month to finish that one. So I just kind of started it and have been reading it slowly. That's it. That's all I have for you for today. Let me know down in the comments what you are currently reading. What do you think of these books that I have talked about today? I would love to chat with you down in the comments. Commenting, liking, and subscribing really help my channel grow and I so appreciate it. I hope you're finding something wonderful to read and until next time, happy reading. Bye!